the thing that I realized about being a professional athlete was it was such a long shot. And I knew that there's only 750 Major League Baseball players. I do think the smart move would have been to get what I call a real job, any other job but being an athlete. But I was gonna chase this dream, give it everything I had. You know, I wasn't the best player on my team, but in the next year I was a little bit better and a little bit better. And I mean, that's kind of the story of my baseball career is try to get a little better every year. I got the opportunity to pay for a chunk of my college education. And so I took that opportunity. And in college, I got an opportunity to play professionally. And so I took that opportunity as well. I mean, I've always been a pretty independent person. I think back, I mean, there was like coaches who maybe talked about their faith and Jesus and God, but yeah, I wasn't really wanting to hear it. I either thought there was no God or, you know, if there is a God, I'll figure it out later. It wasn't a top priority for me or a priority at all. In 2011, I was in AA with the Diamondbacks and our manager was Turner Ward. I first met Paul in AA and got caught up to the big leagues. He's probably the most coachable player I've been around. We'd go to the batting cage and, you know, I'd hit early. We'd take 50, 60 swings working my swing, and then we'd sit there for 20, 30 minutes and just talk about life. He asked me a question. He goes, what do I need to do to get better? I said, well, if you give me a couple of weeks, I'll tell you. I think the shock on his face is thinking probably, man, I, is there that much stuff? Turner was very open with his faith and his beliefs and did not push it on me at all. But of course, I started asking him about the reason he lives his life a certain way and why he believes something different than I did. I said, first of all, you got to grow in your relationship with Christ. Second of all, you got to be a better husband. And third of all, you got to be a better player first time I read anything in the Bible was with him and started reading the book of Proverbs. I just think, you know, whether you're a believer or not, there's so much truth in, the, in those sayings and Proverbs. And that's probably, you know, the first time when my mind was open to where what the Bible says isn't, you know, isn't a lie. Having my mind logically read it, study it, see what that means, have it not contradict itself. I started asking questions and getting answers and just kind of wanted to then explore it more and more. I think that's where my story of knowing Jesus starts. I watched a guy who truly understands what it means to surrender his life to Christ. I think my friends were very open, I would say, even about their mistakes and their vulnerabilities, which then allowed me to kind of eventually do the same thing. I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm making mistakes all the time. The Bible talks about, and Jesus talks about how none of us can be perfect, and, and that's why we need him. And, and that, to me, was a, a message of truth. I mean, I guess that's where, where I'm at. My name is Paul Goldschmidt, and I am second. <laughs>